Jan Karski was neither the first nor last courier to arrive from Warsaw with the news, but he was the most important. He witnessed both the ghettos and the camps, was smuggled into the Belsek concentration camp to see thousands die. Beetled. We can organize another trip. It will be more dangerous, but we would not expose you to a danger if we were not sure we can do it. We can smuggle you for a short time to Belgians. Will you go? Said I will go. Belsek was a small rural town hidden away in eastern Poland. Karski was disguised as an Estonian guard. Next, in the other room, he pointed, there was a sort of a uniform, a jacket, I remember it, kind of a yellow or brown, black trousers, long boots and cap. This is what you will wear. You will be an Estonian militiaman. This I knew at that time, that in those uh, concentration camps, the, the Germans did not want to use the Poles because of secrecy. They would use Ukrainians, Belarusians, Estonians, Latvians, Lithuanians, etc. They didn't speak Polish. So then they had no contact with the population. So I wore this uniform, followed him. We approach the gate, he gets some documents, two German guides, this gesture, not a word, nothing with me, and I have Estonia. Here. We entered the camp, and now, we couldn't go inside very much, because there were several thousand Jews in open air. Again, horrible smell, which I remember now, the stench, horrible stench, unusual. Now, the train is here, some sort of a platform, and then SS men shouting, rouse, rouse, all you then rouse, rouse, shooting, you know, whipping the Jews, and the Jews from the camp directed to the train to go against the Jewish wave and to go behind them was physically impossible or dangerous. So I just stood by the wall. I saw individuals, men, women, children, you know, some uh, looking, uh, you know, with those uh, paisa, some uh, looking normally. Uh, I, I saw them, no, no, I was with them. Belgians, as I learned after the war, was the final station of death. They would burn the Jews in Belgians. I lost again my nerves. I was strong when I was young, but it was horrible. I saw the floor of some empty steel cars, uh, like a white powder. And I didn't know what uh, is it. During the trial in uh, Poland after the war, the station master uh, uh, revealed uh, in most of those trains uh, the floors were covered by lime, and uh, many Jews already were dead. He described, by the way, that it must have been horrible to the Jews, because when you urinate on lime, it burns, you know, if it reaches your skin. I couldn't leave Belgium the same day, because I was sick. So I spent the night, you know, in this. So the next day he came and took me back to Warsaw again. Of course, he was in the Jewish underground. So then I asked him what I saw. What is it? Listen, they take them in those trains to a faraway field, and they leave the trains for two, three days. Oh, Jews die. 
and they empty. The trains bury them you know, in some holes and go again, send the trains again. All this the Polish courier told the prominent and powerful in Great Britain. Then the Polish Prime Minister, General Sikorski, called Jan Karski with the orders to go to America. It must have been more or less June. General Sikorski, Prime Minister and Commander-in-Chief, calls me. And he says, listen, American ambassador with whom I am very friendly, Anthony Drexel Biddle, told me that he informed the president about your report. But he also told me, President Roosevelt does not read the reports. President Roosevelt is a kind of man who wants to see the man, to touch him, to look at him. He is this kind of man. Biddle knows it because they were roommates in Harvard. <laughs> they are personal friends. Biddle advised me to send you secretly to Washington. The president will learn about it. Biddle, although he does not guarantee anything, hopes that the president will lose nerve and knowing that you are in Washington will invite you to the White House to look at you. You go to the United States. A few weeks later, Jan Karski was watching the Statue of Liberty emerge in the mist from New York Harbor, then to Washington. I arrived to Washington, the ambassador. He knew by radio about me, his orders. I will stay at the, on the promises of the embassy. I cannot go to any hotel as long as I stay in Washington. And now, those people I met in Washington, Archbishop Spellman, Archbishop Stritch, Archbishop Mooney, all of them cardinals just after the war, Apostolic Delegate Cardinal Cicconiani, then President Roosevelt, Cordell Hall, Secretary of State. Every day, you know, I had contacts to everyone I spoke about the Jewish problem. You must understand first, Jewish problem was a part of my mission. I had many messages to many people. And then I had like a separate chapter. Yes, Jewish problem. Next point. I met during the war, except Churchill, all most powerful men in the Allied camp. I never knew how long will he keep me. I never knew if under, after five minutes he will say, thank you very much. As some did, you know, after ten minutes, thank you very much, invaluable information. I congratulate you, you are a hero. Uh, goodbye, good luck, young man. I divided my report in a most precise way. The total report could not be longer than half an hour. Jewish part, no more than three, four, five minutes. Jewish, I learned after experience, shifted on the top. Because if it will be in the second part of my report, the men may leave. You know, and I will have no opportunity. So I shifted. Everybody was friendly. Everybody was sympathetic to the Jews. Everybody wanted to help the Jews. Everybody understood what was happening. Now, sir, I have a Jewish report. I was twice in the ghetto. I was once in Belgium. And I have Jewish demands directed to the Allied leaders, Polish government included. 
what is happening to the Jews is unprecedented, is unique. The Jewish masses do not realize it. The leaders know it. All the Jews will be murdered in this war. Hitler decided to murder all Jews regardless of the outcome of the war. Next point. Extermination of the Jews is not prompted by the war strategy. It is a separate problem, purely ideological problem. Hitler wants to liquidate all the Jews in Europe. As a result of it, the Allied leaders must treat the Jewish problem as a separate problem as well, because otherwise they will win the war, but there will be no Jews, and the Jews cannot accept it as a necessity. They must use also unprecedented ways. What are they? First, let them flood Germany with millions of leaflets and describe concentration camps, Nazi officials, spelling names, spelling statistics, spelling the methods, so that the German population will learn, perhaps they don't know what is happening. And what is equally important, they will be unable to say in the future that they were not informed. They can do it. They are dropping bombs on Germany every night. They can drop millions of leaflets. Next. The Allied governments must publicly appeal to the German people to impress upon their own governments that they must change the policy towards the Jews. They must show the Allies evidence that they did exercise such a pressure. If they were unsuccessful, or if there is no evidence that such a pressure was exercised, the Allied governments must make a public declaration. German nation will be responsible for the crimes against the Jews. Perhaps this will help. Next. Certain objects in Germany, not of military nature, must be bombed and the population must be informed through BBC before the operation and after the operation that this particular valuable object was destroyed as a retaliation for what the Germans do to the Jews and that this retaliation will continue as long as the Germans will pursue the same policy. Next point. The Allies have German nationals. They have German war prisoners. If a German war prisoner asked, declares his loyalty to the Nazi system of government, he must be informed he will be held responsible for those atrocities as well. Next point. Some Jews may be saved. Passports are needed, blank passports. And I remember one of those Jewish leaders says, what are the, where is the problem with passports? Those banana republics, Americans have them in their pockets. They can send us tens of thousands of passports. They must be blank. We will supply the picture. We will falsify part of the stamps, of course, on those. Gestapo can be bribed. German officials are corrupted.